Have you ever had a moment where the bottom dropped out? Has something unexpected happened and it's punched you in the face, it's hit you in the gut because you never saw it coming? Maybe you lost your job, maybe it was a family crisis, maybe it was a medical diagnosis. Un unexpected life happens and puts each and every one of us in a place that we have never imagined. Unexpected life puts us in the uncomfortable. It requires us to step out in faith, take a risk, try something new. It might require us to ask for help. And it is in those moments that I believe we are our most courageous. In 2009, I was a stay-at-home mom. I have four amazing kids. We had just brought home my youngest, a beautiful baby girl. And I remember that moment in January when my now former husband came home and told me he had lost his job. It was January 2009. It was the Great Recession. He bravely took our sons to Cub Scouts that night and I, clutching my beautiful daughter, crumpled to the floor of our family room and thought, what are we gonna do? Lord, what are we going to do? Four children, no income. Over the next few days, I asked for help. I called the school and I said, could you put my kids on free and reduced lunch? And I talked to a friend, a dear friend who helped me get my children on all kids, the free state health care. And then I looked at our budget and I figured out how we could stretch every dollar we had in savings and that we'd have a few months and we'd be okay. In April, there was still no income, there was no job. And so I said, time for mom to go back to work. Thankfully, a dear, dear friend of mine forwarded a job. Northern Illinois Food Bank was looking for a fundraiser, someone who could help them raise money to build a new warehouse. I had worked in fundraising. I had helped build new buildings for the Chicago Symphony Orchestra and Lurie Children's Hospital and Brookfield Zoo. The food bank was close to home and it was the Lord's work. I applied for the job and thankfully I got the job. Fast forward five years and the CEO of the food bank announced that he's leaving. And he comes to me and he says, no, Julie, you could do this job. And I think, no, I cannot. Um, and he says, no, you can. And he says, I'm gonna tell the board that they should hire you. And once again, I stepped out in courage and I said, I'm gonna apply for that job, and thankfully I got the job. Unexpected life happens and puts each and every one of us into situations we have never previously imagined. Northern Illinois Food Bank's vision is for no one to be hungry. We believe in full bellies. We want every man, woman, child, senior to go to bed with a full belly. We serve 13 counties. We cover all of the suburbs of Chicago. We go out past Rockford into Stevenson County, and then we swoop east, past DeKalb all the way down into Kankakee. We have four warehouses, and out of those warehouses, we provide food, fresh, nutritious groceries to over 900 feeding sites. Food banking was founded in the 1960s by John Van Hangel, who saw that there was all this food going to waste in America, and there were all these people who needed it, and all we needed was a charitable food distribution method, a model that could move that food to our neighbors in need. There are now more than 200 food banks across the country. We are part of Feeding America. Last year, we distributed five billion meals to our neighbors in need. We send these meals out to food pantries, soup kitchens, and shelters each and every day. Northern Illinois Food Bank provided 69 million meals last year to half a million people. We are the largest food bank in Illinois. We are the seventh largest food bank in the country. Would it surprise you to know that the neighbors we serve are working families? 77% of our families have someone working in the home. Would it surprise you to know that 50% of them are grappling with a health crisis, a chronic health disease? Would it surprise you to know that most of the people we serve in the suburbs of Chicago and in rural America are white? Would it surprise you to know that every day those neighbors are making choices between do I buy groceries or do I pay for my medical bill, my prescriptions, gas, rent, tough choices. If there's one thing I want you to remember from our conversation today, it is this, that hunger in the suburbs of Chicago and in Northern Illinois looks just like you and like me. Here is Patrick. Patrick is a young dad. 
He's a single dad. He adopted his beautiful son three years ago. Shortly after that, his chronic health condition worsened and he had to have surgery and that has left him with um, limited mobility and he can't get around very well. So he comes to food pantries and he, he can no longer work. He comes with his son. It's tough for him navigating a food pantry with a cane and a rambunctious three-year-old. And then there's Amanda. Amanda is also a young mom. Her husband's hours have been cut back over the last 18 months. She stretches their dollar. She goes to the store. She told me she buys a lot of oatmeal and peanut butter because it fills their bellies for longer. Unfortunately, Amanda does not come to us. She doesn't come to a food pantry. It's embarrassing. She has shame. She's worried she's going to be judged or rejected. I understand our family's pain. I have lived it. I have lived in their fear. And it's because of that, because of that knowledge, because of my understanding that I had my breakthrough moment in 2017. I was reading the book, Delivering Happiness by Tony Shea. He's the founder of Zappos. And he's talking about how he's created this online shoe store that offers, offers choice and convenience and ridiculously fast delivery to his customers. At the same time, I had realized I had ordered my daughter's Barbie Dream House online, and I had picked it up at my local Target store. And I was watching Mariano's, and they were rolling out ClickList, which is where you can order your groceries, and then they, pick, they get them for you, and you pull up, and they put them in the back of your car while you wait in the parking lot. And I thought, I thought about Patrick, and I thought about Amanda, and I thought, how could we offer this choice this convenience and this anonymity for our neighbors. That's how My Pantry Express was born, your online source for groceries when in need. Our neighbors, who we invite to come in, can go online. They give us very little information because anonymity is important. They can pick the time, the place, um, the date that they want to pick up their groceries because convenience is important. And then they can choose from 35 to 40 items Always fresh milk, yogurt, frozen meats, fresh produce, and lots of shelf stables. They submit their order and within three business days, they can come to our pickup location and get it. While this may not seem innovative in the for-profit world, it is for food banking. There are a handful of food pantries across the country that allow neighbors to pre-order or order at a kiosk and then wait for them to fulfill their order. But no other food bank is doing it. And what is unique about My Pantry Express as we built it, we talked to our neighbors, and what they said was they didn't want to go to a food pantry to get the food because of the stigma. And so our neighbors can go to Northern Illinois University, they can go to an elementary school, they can go to multiple Walmart stores, and then they can also go, starting next month, to Goodwill. Since we launched My Pantry Express in February of this year, we have fulfilled 4,000 orders. It's 200,000 meals for 1,000 unique families. Our families are reporting to us that they are able to stretch their dollars and provide more nutritious foods for their families. Our families are telling us it's fast, it's convenient, it's easy, and it's not embarrassing at all. Uh, our families are telling us 94% um, of them will recommend it to somebody else. 94% of them will use it again. It is nearly a home run. Unfortunately, our demand has outstripped our supply. Given the food bank resources, we can't keep up. We started with 140 weekly orders. We're now at 380. We hope to be at 600 by mid-June. At that point, that will be a million meals provided through My Pantry Express. I've thrown out a ton of numbers this morning. A million meals, 94%. But the real number that matters is one. It's that one person who steps out and asks for help. It is that one person who's willing to invest in My Pantry Express or become a volunteer for us. It is that one unexpected life moment a long time ago that led to the one idea that is making life a little bit better for our neighbors in Northern Illinois. If you want to be a part of our one, we would love to have you. Go to solvehungertoday.org forward slash MPX. We would love for you to get involved with us. And that brings me to you. What was your one unexpected life moment? What was it that punched you in the gut 
that required you to step out and try something new, to take a risk, to ask for help. What did you learn? How did it change your perspective? And I ask you today, I challenge you, to step out in courage one more time and use what you now know to be true, to make your home happier, to make results at work better, to strengthen your community, and help change our world for good. Thank you so much. God bless.